Hello there and welcome to Katarasa Jolinks here. Next Monday. It's the next Monday. Actually, no, it's not. It's uh, the second day of the week. Tuesday. The next Monday is marked by a strange emptiness that grips me, caused by the knowledge that I won't be able to see Rin whenever I want anymore. This hollow feeling's a little bit disconcerting, but I make it to the afternoon all the same. My last class is, in a word, terrible. It's not that the lesson is that bad. It is, however, boring and it's so hot in the classroom that I feel like I'm melting. The air conditioning is either broken or turned off, so the windows are open. It makes no difference, since the air outside is completely still. You guys have air conditioning? In classrooms? What? Only the chirping of cicadas carries inside. I think I only had one classroom throughout my, my entire school career, which had air conditioning. And it was... actually no, actually... Yes, when it comes to schools, yes. And it was high school IT lessons. The only time we had uh, air conditioning, the only place. Other than that, no other classrooms had that. And now that I think about it, at university it was the same. Only like, uh, not really classrooms, but... <sighs> laboratories, laboratory rooms. So basically you had work on computers, right? Only those at the top, uh, at the top level of the building had the air conditioning as well. The others didn't have that. I wonder why it's like that. Whatever. The air conditioning is the broken turn off, so the windows are open. It makes no difference since the air outside is completely still. Only the chirping of cigars carries inside. The sweltering heat permeates the room. Students and teachers alike are in an almost delirious state. I just want to stand up and walk out here without caring what the teacher or anyone else says. I can see I'm not the only one with these thoughts too. Uh, which maybe is kind of normal. Next to me, Misha is shamelessly holding her skirt up a bit and finding air in with her notebook. <laughs> What are you, Konata? Only Shuzna seems to be as cool as always, sitting with her back perfectly straight, arms folded on her chest, her eyes fixed on the equations scrolled on the blackboard. I keep shooting, yearning, glasses at my watch, but it doesn't help the time to go by any faster. Don't look at the watch, mate. It makes it go slower. I don't know why, but it's like that. It's funny, I remember how badly I want to get out of the hospital and go back to school. Now all I can think of is the upcoming summer vacation and freedom from the classes and homework. Perhaps it's human nature to think only of the situation at hand. Finally, the bell rings. I relieve my classmates I burst out in the hallway already crowded by students from our neighboring classes. I spot Emmy's diminutive figure nearby and walk up to her. Hi there. She smiles sweetly, clearly happy to see me. Hisa! What's up? Is your classroom super hot too? Yeah, it is. I thought I was going to melt in there. Nothing else really happening for. Feeling a bit weird now that Ren is on her great adventure, whatever you want to call it. Emmy's face cracks in a wide smile and she jumps up and down enthusiastically. Isn't it great? I'm so happy for her. I bet everyone will like her paintings and she'll sell a lot of them make piles of money. Yeah. I'm sure it will work out great. I'm totally soaking at her for. She huffs angry and places her hands firmly in her hips, even letting a little anger seep into her voice. It doesn't quite have the impact she's probably hoping for, but I say nothing. Why is that? She said that she doesn't want me to go see her. Oh yeah, yeah, she mentioned that. I guess she prefers to not be distracted. I can understand that. I don't think I missed much of a distraction. Besides, I'm sure she'll forget about sleeping and eating properly if someone's not there telling her to do it. Sometimes she's like that, gets completely fixated on whatever and drops everything else. It really makes me worried, you know. Is she going to be alright? Such friendship. I wonder. I wonder if she thinks I'm annoying. 
I'm pretty sure that's not the case at all. Amy shakes her head, looking amused. I'm not sure if she's joking or not. She has these weird ideas about a lot of stuff. Things just make sense to her in a totally different way than they did to me. I can't even remember all the weird stuff she's talking about over all this time. I don't think Rin does either, really. She's the type who'd forget her own head if it wasn't attached to her shoulders. That's why I just can't leave her alone. Is that weird? She leans against the wall, managing to de look distraught, and yet still cheerful as always. I get a strange feeling about it, as why we're talking to people at the same time. How'd I know? Everyone's weird in some way, but if that's yours, it's a very nice way. At least, I can understand what you're talking about. Unlike Rin. Most of the time, I have no idea what's going on inside of her. Head, either. And he giggles, nodding in agreement. I think it's okay if you don't, even if you don't understand her. That's how she usually is. And me stands up straighter, brushing the hem of her shirt. I mean, scared and straightening the waistline. She laughs awkwardly. <laughs> Whoa! We ended up talking pretty seriously. What's up with you, Sal? Why'd you bring this up? Uh, sorry. I didn't really mean to get into that sort of discussion either. I just. I don't know. I've had this weird feeling lately about Rin. I don't know why. I feel a bit guilty. Bringing up something like this for no reason except my own anxiety. It will be fine. Don't worry about it. Sally, Amy clutched my wrist and twisted it so she can see what time it is from my watch. <gasps> oh, damn, it's late already. I should really go out there meeting with the rest of the team. Track team at the field. It's not going to be fun in this heat. We're going to sweat like pigs, but I promise I'll be there. Yeah, it's, it go it's gonna be like that if it's scorching outside. I know the feeling. Bye bye! She skips downstairs, leaving me wondering if what I said or what Rin said rather hurt her or not. Maybe what Amy herself said hurt her the most, come to that. So, in the end, even the person closest to Rin is just as far apart from her as everyone else. I wonder if Rin herself even feels that distance. I felt like I was drifting away from the world too. During my hospitalization, I felt anxious and depressed, and even now, I sometimes still do. But I fight against it with all I've got. If Rin has been on that side of the divide for her whole life, I can imagine how she could not be lonely, but perhaps she's truly different. I refuse to belong to the other place, but maybe she's found comfort there. Like, I mean, I have a club meeting of my own. So I head straight to the art club room at the end of the hallway. Only a few members are present today, so the mood's even more laid back than usual. Rini swore off working on her exhibition project, but I wonder if the rest are simply just playing hooky, defeated by the heat. I half fastly sketch something with a piece of graphite, but do a poor job of it. My fingertips are turning pitch black from holding the graphite and smudging ink on the paper, accidentally and on purpose. I've improved a little, but Rini's level is still far beyond my reach. Eventually. Nomia comes in and makes his way around the room, checking on what we're doing and giving comments on the works in progress. He stops behind me and bends closer to look at my poor sketch. Tried to take a few pointers from Trisuka, have you? Uh, uh, what? Well, well I, I mean, I've looked at how she draws, but I haven't exactly asked for advice now. Mm, let's see here. He casually picks up the piece of graphite from my hand and lightly draws some faint, barely visible lines over my sketch to illustrate places that need improvement. I already feel frustrated about not seeing the obvious flaws before, but with a couple of colorless, seeming flicks of the wrist, Nomia has made them plain as day. Staring up, he draws a sideways glance at the seat where Rin usually sits. Such a nostalgic feeling, almost like a bird flying from the nest. Almost as go when she graduates. It begins from here, you know. Nearly makes my eyes a little misty. <laughs> Do you really think she has a chance to make her big break with the exhibition? Nomia turn, turns, looks up from my sketch, adjusting his glasses. He wraps his chin, looking contemplative. Why not? It's not like she's going to be an overnight smash hit or anything. But getting the word out there is very important. 
Connections are pure gold. Maybe the most important thing to gain if she is to become an artist. Word of mouth is very powerful in these circles. She gets some advantages, like her young age and technique. You know, the feet. People will really naturally curious about extraordinary things like that. His words have an unpleasant ring to them. Isn't just exploiting her disability to make her more popular? It sounds fishy. Ah, no, no, it's not like that at all. Think of it from another perspective, like an artist. Would you rather have Tezuka hide herself completely from public view, as if her condition were something shameful? Some people will call it exploitation if we promote that aspect, or discrimination if we hide it. All will consider we're just being honest about it. There is nothing wrong with that, right, my boy? Guess so. Brilliant! It's true that disability always has all sorts of implications in society, often nasty ones, but brushing things under the carpet won't help at all. I'm sure Sai will handle her side of the issue with this delicacy. I've known her since art school and she's most reliable. Why is she going so far for Rin's sake? Because it's you who asked? Oh, she has her own reasons too. Trust this old man, she's more kind-hearted than she looks. Uh, but don't let her know that I said that. He gives me a big wink and covers his mouth with his hand, as if to push the remark back in. I remember the curious way Miss Sanji looked at Rin almost the entire time being our visit to during our visit to the gallery. It was like that one was trying to imprint everything about her into the memory. Or maybe it was that Rin reminded her of something else. Or someone else. Huh. Hmm. <clears throat> Mostly Sai simply adores young people with a passion for art. Her gallery specializes in this very thing, bringing up and coming talent to the public. But the question is, is it really the 22nd corner? <laughs> It's a perfect thing for someone like Tezuka. I don't even know if she really wants to become a car artist for, but I guess that'd be the logical next step. I don't have the faintest idea. Like they say, a teacher can only show the door. It's the student who has to walk through it. An old, tired sake, but still quite true. He leaves to chat with a pair of second year girls working on some watercolors. Even Fox said that cliched thing, it feels to me like Tommy is trying to prod Rin to a certain door in particular, but I can't blame him for that. I literally shoved Rin towards that door, what, with my speeches about wasting opportunities and what's not. Tommy feels like it's time for him to let Rin test her own wings. He has absolute confidence in this endeavor. I wonder why I can't shed the anxious feeling I have inside of me. It shouldn't have anything to do with me. Maybe I'm just bothered by exactly that. I really don't have any part in this. I would. I would like to be part of Rain's life and her a part of mine. Like friends should be. That's what she called us. I wonder what Shelly meant. I feel like I'm so far apart from her, even when I'm not. It's the same as with Rain and Emmy. I can't understand her. What am I for her? I want to support her. I want to understand her. Oh my god. Why do you give me so, such such tough, tough choices? I want both! <laughs> Let's go with support. I mean, because sometimes it's not possible to understand what the other person is thinking, right? Or feeling. Let's go with that. I would be there for her. If she needs support from a friend, it's the least I can do. How could I call someone my friend if I can't be there for her if she needs me? Nomia's boisterous laugh fills the quiet afternoon just as the club meeting ends. He pats one of the girls on the back encouragingly. I think about all the things that have led me to this point. All the things I've shared with Rain during the few weeks I've been at Yamaku so far. I understand so little in the end, but I'm sure. Of one thing. If I want to keep going what I have with Rain, I have to throw myself into whatever I will come out of this exhibition project along with her. I turn my gaze back at the black mass of sketch and the near invisible guiding lines that each draw over it. 
No pattern emerges. Nothing that could take me further than I am. I put the graphite down the table and think hard tendency about what I really want. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder that myself too. The next day, I take the bus into the city. It goes twice an hour. Starting in the morning, passing by the front gate of Yamako at 20 minutes past 10, 10 to the hour. The ride takes considerably longer than the one Nomia gave us in his car, which is not natural. I slowly read a book at the bus as the bus makes it its rounds through the suburbs, pausing at almost every stop to pick up someone or let them out. Eventually we make it to the last stop at the city centre. The city is fair sight but not too large and seems too quiet. Nevertheless, I enjoy the atmosphere. Despite being slightly directionally challenged, I find my way from the bus station to the gallery without too much effort, and soon I find myself staring at the big letters saying, 22nd corner. Is it, for, is it really a 22nd corner? <laughs> Inside the gallery owner is intently standing a large painting hanging on the wall, a portrait of an old man. Good afternoon. She turns around to look at me, and a smile of recognition spreads on her lips. Oh, aren't you the young man from the other A? She's a student. Uh, he saw, was it? That's right. Good afternoon, Miss Sanji. Please just sigh. I don't want to feel any older than I am. You don't look old for. You know, I'm so glad that even young people show interest in art nowadays. It's so refreshing. What brings you here? Surely you aren't just on a courtesy visit all the way from your school. Uh, well, I actually came for it. I was hoping to see how she's doing. Oh, is that right? Well then, you need to step back outside. You see, the atelier is actually at the next door on the right down on the street. And up the stairwell, just climb the stairs to the floor. There is only one door there, you can't miss it. Are you challenging <laughs> my ability to, to follow directions? I give Sai my things, exit the gallery and locate the door she was talking about. Damn, the stairs look like the ones in the school. Except in the school it goes from right to left, right? <clears throat> it leads to a dark stairwell which reminds me of the stairs leading to the roof of the school building. I just said that! The stairs are steep and even though it's only 5 floors, my breathing gets heavy before I reach the top. An unassuming wooden door waits for me there. It's unlocked, so I knock and enter. Da -da. Whoa. Nice. Very nice. He says something. No. Wait. Is this a picture literally black and some guy trying to mop the floor or something like that? Ah, the atelier is really just one big room, with the, ceiling uh, with the ceiling lower at one end than the other, because the roof of the building is goblet. Goblet? Goblet? I actually don't know what that means. Uh, is it like cut? Doesn't that mean that? I'd say it's that meaning, but... Okay, maybe not. Never mind. The atelier is really... I read this. There is a huge skylight in the ceiling that acts as the main source of light for the room, bringing in sunlight that reflects off the white painted walls. I suppose it's good to use natural light for art. There is much in the way of the interior decoration, no surprise, since the room seems to have been used as storage for a while. All kinds of boxes and office furniture scatter around the place. The room is dusty since it's not been used for a while. I can see that someone has made some effort to clean up a little, but it's far from immaculate. Well, let's do it myself. Rain stands in the middle of the room, with her back to me, staring at a half-painted canvas placed on an easel. Not working on it, just staring, unmoving. She wears what must be second or third hand denim overalls over the standard school uniform shirt, much like the one I'm, wear I'm wearing. They look pretty worn and are covered in paint spatters from the way they seem to be loose or tight in places. I'm guessing that they weren't originally rinsed. Hi. 
Hello. Rindan judged my showing up as worthy of turning around, saying maybe something more than just a mechanical reply to my greeting, smiling, anything. She keeps on doing whatever it she it is she's doing, probably some weird creative thinking inside of her head. Perhaps I should have expected as much. Still, I make another attempt at conversation. This pretty good place, big two. It is. So I said I can use this as much as I like. I even have my own key. So, how's the work going? She doesn't answer for a while. I begin to wonder if she's already forgotten the question. As a cloud drifts over the building, shadowing the light pouring in from the skylight, the change in its surroundings seem to wake her up. I don't know. It's like a huge ball. I don't know which side is the right one. It's really huge. It's the hugest thing ever. Like a mountain growing inside of me. Like I swallowed a mountain hole. It's going to be hard, I think. Really very hard. I try to listen for undercurrents of stress or uncertainty in her voice, but I don't pick up anything like that. Why are you here? Her tone is not as unkind as the directness of the question would make it seem, by the way. Well, I mean, you said you'd be fine if I came to visit, so... Here I am! I guess it's not for my for any real reason, but I thought you might like company or assistance or maybe some... He saw... Can you be quiet for about 15 minutes? Maybe 10 is enough. 5 definitely is not. You can talk afterwards. Her tone is sharp. Nothing I ever heard from her before. There is no command, no annoyance, no anger. But her voice pierces me all the same. Alright. With the silence that falls, anxiety creeps back in my heart. I wonder if it was a mistake to come here. Murmurs of traffic filter it from outside and I start to feel more and more uncomfortable. All my thoughts keep finding themselves returning to certain things that have been swirling relentlessly in the back of my mind for some time now. I feel like those thoughts will surface out of the tempestuous sea of my mind, whether I want it or not. Desperate to divar divert my focus, I fix it on Rinsbeck as my mind traces. I don't think I've ever studied anyone's back so intently before. Her neck, hidden by copper-colored hair, which is, again, in complete disarray. That relaxed yet rigid posture reminis reminding me that Rin's physical appearance often tends to be as awkward as her various trains of thought. Those gaunt, delicate shoulders, blades visible through the thin white fabric of her shirt. The contours of her hips carrying down her thin thighs. It pisses me off. Huh? Rarely does she ever seem to be looking at me, whether literally or figuratively. I, on the other hand, am always watching her back, both literally and figuratively. Whenever she's painting, whenever something catches her flattery attention, whenever I don't forcefully make her listen to me, I can't reach through to her. Rin's heart is uncharted territory, dangerous waters, the blank areas on a map, the edge of the world. If I went to close, I wonder if I would fall off. What do I think of her? Sometimes she's aloof and distant and annoys me. At the other times, her passion for things she thinks worthwhile shines through and it inspires me. I can't understand her. Still, I like her and consider her my friend. I suppose part of friendship is putting up with the oddities of the people you call friends. I have to admit, there is a lot of putting up with her. In. What does she think of me? I have no idea. Last week I thought she might have liked me romantically. What with that kiss and all? It forced me to ponder my own feelings too. This week I am utterly confused. What would she do if I told her I like her that way? I wonder if I really do. Damn, I can't make sense of even my own thoughts anymore. It must be contagious. Even if I said a thing like that, would it matter? Nothing affects Rin. Nothing. I'm done. I find her turned around, now staring straight at me. It nerves me. I try to remember what we, or rather I, were talking about before she requested the timeout. Oh, right. Uh, I just can't. I, I don't know. You still can't finish your sentences? It's not that. Fine. She retreats from the conversation, slip me away from me once again. 
She then returned to painting, but instead keeps looking at me with that empty poker face of hers. I want to talk about some stuff. Uh, I thought a lot about things and yeah. What things? Like what happened last week and so on. What happened? I get the feeling that she's playing for me. Why? I have no clue. It is not a game she's playing for my head. I'm pretty sure she done deliberately try to screw with people. Maybe just my old mind playing tricks on itself. Still, Rin feels like a puzzle in the form of a girl. I feel attracted to it, compelled to solve it. The overly rational part of my brain refusing to let me give up. I can't leave her alone. I never would have believed I could be this obsessive about something. Why do I hesitate so much and keep running in circles around her? I don't have to do that. I already decided what I want to say. Rin. Saying her name with intention like this makes my mouth dry. I see my subconscious fighting against what I'm going to say next. I feel I'm going to look up any moment now. We are ready. Rin looks up from her paint cover tools and stops ringing them, as there isn't anyone to observe them curiously now. The hard stare of her dark green eyes seem like portrait. Right? What? Like a portent? Okay. I like you. The lack of any reaction is like a slap to the face. So, uh, uh, I mean, I like you as more than a friend. What is more? The slow, hesitant words coming from between her strawberry colored lips are not the ones I was waiting for. Neither of the two possible answers that I've been expecting, actually. I feel myself blushing heavily as if, as is par for the curse in this kind of situation. My heartbeat sounds like a percussion orchestra on drugs. In before he gets a heart attack. Rin's fox innocent inquiry feels like I'm being grilled over hot coals. You know, like romantically at... No, 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 no. Rin turns around, give me the cold shoulder as she returns looking at her painting. She makes a move to pick up her brush, which lies forgotten on the floor, but decides against it at the last moment. I can't talk about that kind of thing now. So, don't talk about that kind of thing, please. We are friends, right? So you can do that. The silence, those words leave behind, is deafening. I want to say something, but my mouth refuses to move. There is no way I can retain my dignity. Rin finally picks up the brush without giving an explanation for her behavior. Maybe there was something in her voice that gave away some emotion, but I couldn't say what. Her shoulders slump and ironically as her foot work the canvas in front of her. She won't let me see her face and I know it. Feeling the wave of my heart go heavier, I stand up to leave, for I can't stay here any longer today. It's like I've opened Pandora's box by stepping over some line that Rin didn't want me to cross, and she had to turn me down. I walk across the squeaky floor to the door leading to the stairwell. Rin's quiet voice stops me in my tracks, I'm about to open the door. He saw... My hand still on the brass doorknob, it's waiting for me to turn it or to withdraw. Oh. Yeah. Will you come tomorrow? Huh? Yeah. Oh boy, this route is tough, this route is tough, because I understand it. After a night of bad sleep, I go through the day mostly on automatic. I put on my uniform mechanically, do my schoolwork mechanically, eat my lunch mechanically, reply to teachers mechanically, and thus, when the final bell rings, I still feel as if I had just woken up. My mind feels blank and overcrowded with, at the same time, and I can't begin to unravel the tangle of feelings I've gotten myself into. I spend the bus trip downtown staring out of the window, thinking about these things. As a result, by the time I climb the stairs to the atelier, four floors above size gallery, I'm feeling completely exhausted. Expecting awkwardness, I qui quietly knock on the door before entering. I spot Rina at the center of the small, clear area in the room, working on a painting. She doesn't acknowledge my arrival in any way. Ah, uh, I came as promised. 
Her in stumps her head to my direction immediately. Was she waiting for me to say something? And looks that cold green gaze of her stood me. Although I'm sure my own face can't hide my feelings, Rin's expression is as expectant and neutral as always. The clouded, slightly absent minded darkness in her eyes is like a wall standing between me and her. It is the first awkward silence between us that is truly awkward. Yesterday, both of us said something we couldn't take back, and there is no way it can be undone. I want to say something, but Rin forbade me from doing so. I can begin to guess what she's thinking, but I'm feeling the pressure of her lifeless eyes on me, compelling me to break the silence without saying the thing I was I most want to say. To my horror, I find that I can't find any way to start a conversation. It's as if I've completely lost the ability to speak with her. Um, just keep working for the middle of something, I'll just sit down here. Rin nods wordlessly at me and picks up the brush from the floor with the tools of her right foot. I sink into a worn out sofa, picking up a book from my back and opening it to where I stopped last night. I can't really concentrate on it, but it's better than doing nothing. The two halves are so close to each other, together in the same room even. And yet, we're both off doing our own thing as if we were miles apart. I can't help but wonder about this unnatural situation. Why did I come here? Because she asked me to do so yesterday, of course. However, it looks like there is absolutely no need for me to actually be here. It makes me feel awkward at first, but as I recall the previous sinuses I've quietly passed with Rin, I settle down and try to tune into some same comfortable mood I was in back then. Time stretches, fan slows down. The pages of my book rustle each time I turn them after maybe half an hour, or one hour at most. Rin breaks the silence to my complete surprise. He saw... Yeah? Are you my friend? It's an echo of yesterday, I know it. So even Rin couldn't just push it aside from her mind. Code of guard, I answer honestly. Uh, so, yeah, of course I am. Don't worry about stuff like that, come on. Okay... She doesn't say anything further. I feel happy somehow. Several chapters later, I mark my spot, close the book, and put the way in my back. Getting up from the sofa, I see that Rin's made considerable progress on her painting. I take a look at it for a bit. It's still not quite finished, I suppose. Look great. It's bad luck to comment on unfinished paintings. After that, I quietly leave the studio and catch the bus. Taking me back to the school. And I end the episode. And say we'll actually continue tomorrow. For now, hope you enjoyed. Hope you have a wonderful day. Until. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.